Welcome everyone. This is Greg Reeve. Um, so I, I work at Brigham Young University. We're welcome. We're, me and Lisa are your facilitators today on this uh, session. This is being solo no more collaborating through learning through a virtual study group on linked data. So we'll uh, leave it to our presenters to introduce themselves. And then after they present, we'll do a Q and A. And, and when you answer, ask your questions, if you can use the Q and A button here in the webinar, to ask your questions. We'll be monitoring the questions uh, as we go. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. All right, are the slides up for everyone? Yeah, they look good. Okay. Um, so hi everybody, um, welcome to our presentation, Being Solo No More, Collaborative Learning Through a Virtual Study Group on Linked Data. Everyone presenting today is a member of our study group. Jill Crane is Associate Professor and Librarian at St. Mary's University in San Antonio, Texas. Martha Hood is Associate Director, Assessment and Planning at the University of Houston Clear Lake. Shi Ping Liu is the resource description librarian at the University of Houston main campus. Jodine Pappas is the cataloging services librarian at Stephen F. Austin State University in Nacogdoches, Texas. Uh, Sharon Wright is man metadata management librarian at the University of Connecticut Library. Uh, and I'm Susan Vandal. I currently, I'm currently the technical services librarian at Dickinson College in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. But when our group started, I was the catalog librarian at the University of Houston, Clear Lake. So today we're going to talk about our rationale for forming our linked data study group and the initial goals and efforts of the founding members from the University of Houston system libraries. Jodine, Jill, and Sharon, who joined in our second year, will then discuss their journeys. We will also talk about our current membership and our shared goals. Then we will discuss the process of planning for the study group, the topics we discussed in the first two years of our group, um, some of our accomplishments and the challenges and benefits of working in a study group. Um, to close, we'll talk about our individual projects and future plans. Um, now I'll turn things over to Martha, who will talk about the initial formation of our study group at the University of Houston Libraries. Thank you, Susan. The area of linked data was an area that many of us were eager to learn more about and we all found ourselves as the solo cataloger or metadata librarian at our own institutions. So one very enticing incentive and rationale for forming this study group was the idea of working in a friendly, supportive learning environment where we knew we were all beginners. By working together, the process was a little less stressful and overwhelming for everyone. In addition, since like linked data was an area we were all just beginning to understand, we all found it difficult to ask administration for funding to support our learning of this new area, especially when asked the question, how can this, how can this benefit our library? Next slide, please. Also, we found strength in not being solo. Several of the U of H librarians already worked together through various committees since we share a catalog. So this was a natural streamline beginning for us. Today, we have added new members from other universities throughout Texas and the United States. And therefore, we have continued to grow with new knowledge and strength. We also shared the responsibility of leading discussions which helped divide the group workload and also assisted with our own individual day-to-day -day work commitments. Lastly, our collaborative study group had a desire to replicate other university projects we had seen at various conferences. Our cross-institutional membership would provide a unique opportunity for this in the near future. Next slide, please. During our first year, we decided on a few foundational goals. One, 
was to specifically understand bib frame and link data concepts. And then two, to utilize the bib frame editor and explore any tools which would help us convert records in our library system from MARC to bib frame. Next slide, please. Before discussing our initial efforts, um, I did want to share that our group decided to utilize Google Drive and Google Hangouts to assist us with our monthly themed meetings. Our suggested reading materials were developed together and each article was looked over before each meeting. So topics for our monthly meetings included understanding linked data in BibFrame and the editor tool we discussed in the previous slide. In addition, we also discussed adding URIs to MARC records you're using Terry Reese's MARC Edit, MARC Next, which is a free linked records tool. Our meetings naturally led to the desire to present what we had worked on during the year. So we presented a poster session at the Texas Library Association Conference in Austin. This conference was where we connected with Joe Dean, who is now a current member of our study group and who will share with you her journey. Next slide, please. Thanks, Martha. I want to back up two years or so. My first year, I read articles and attended webinars and conferences, but struggled to understand technical details. I took an introductory metadata class and chose my library's archival Charlie Wilson collection. As a US Congressman from Texas, the Charlie Wilson collection would have wide appeal throughout Texas, US, and globally for government and other related topics. His story was even made into a popular movie starring Tom Hanks. I used the MARC records for the books and videos, an EAD record for the archival collection, and applied what I learned in the metadata class to the bibliographic and archival records I had. Then I was fortunate to present at four conferences the second year. Some takeaways from those conferences that I picked up were um, one that technical folks who are writing need to write for non-technical folks and not their peers. And two, that when I admitted to being stuck on where to store my project data, an audience member suggested using WordPress. And three, that at the 2019 Texas Library Association Conference I presented and asked for a partner or partners to work on a project together. And that is when Jill and I agreed to work together. Then I saw the poster by Xi Ping, Susan and Martha, and met them and suggested we join to learn together virtually. In 2018, at the ALA conference in New Orleans, I led a round table discussion at a Creative Ideas for Technical Services session, and Sharon Wright was one of the participants. She contacted me um, in spring 2019 and I shared my presentation with her and invited her to join our new virtual study group. Meanwhile, she had been learning about BibFrame. And my fourth conference last year was the LD4 2019 conference in Boston. I saw so many awesome projects from places with resources. It made me want to start my own small group for solo catalogers to learn together. Now Jill will tell about her individual efforts. Hello. Uh, I had been trying to research and study linked data on my own by signing up for online webinars, or at least the ones that were free, examining websites such as the LD4 site and the Library of Congress, reading articles and um, doing, when I could, attending conference programs about linked data. Uh, it did seem that any projects that were working on implementing linked data seemed only to involve large and well-funded organizations, and I wondered how to get involved myself. It was at a Texas Library Association uh, annual conference that I attended Jodine's presentation 
about starting a small linked data project. And we talked afterwards when Jodine suggested studying linked data together, to which I agree. Then Sharon. So as Jodine mentioned, um, she and I met at the 2018 ALA conference when I attended the Alex discussion on linked data that she hosted. Back in spring 2019, I created a self-directed learning project on Bibframe as part of my Maryland Public Library recertification. At the time, I worked for the Southern Maryland Regional Library Association. I reached out to Jodine to discuss my project with her and to get her feedback and advice as I used MarkEdit's MarkNext feature to explore linked data concepts using Mark records. She shared news of the study group's formation with me and asked if I'd be interested in participating. I quickly expressed my interest. Next slide, please. So here are our members listed alphabetically with their titles and the institutions where they are from. So basically we are representing three Texas institutions, one from Pennsylvania and one from Connecticut. Also another way to look at it is we are from four public institutions and two private. In size, we range from small and medium to large. Next slide, please. <coughs> So we agreed that we all wanted to have the same goals to keep updated with current developments, to seek opportunities to convert and publish respective collections into linked data, to explore ALMA's linked data capabilities, and to publish an article or present at a conference. Next slide, please. Xi Ping and I began planning in August last year when the whole group met, we agreed on the goals as mentioned on the previous slide. Our only rules were that everyone should share in leading the monthly discussion. In that role, they would identify the learning materials, including webinars or reading material, et cetera, and come up with the discussion topics. We decided to meet on the first Thursday of each month from 2 to 3 p.m. using Zoom. If it didn't work for the majority of uh, four people, we would reschedule. Our Google Drive included the study plan for each month, links to resources, and questions to review before and during our meeting. Next, Xi Ping will share the topics that we covered. Thank you, Jodine. Um, so we started this year with a session reviewing what we have learned the year before, also to make sure that our understanding of linked data are on the same page and that includes the understanding of basic concept of linked data and semantic web, RDF, and the Bitframe model. Next, we spend a session learning about Synopia, a linked data editor developed by the LD4 project. Susan created a, a reading list, which included articles and webinars um, about Synopia, um, explaining the features of Synopia editor and the changes from Bitframe Editor to Synopia Editor, so we could all read before we met. We created an account with Synopia and look at the linked data editor together, going over the monograph work and instance templates, making sure we understand how to add or delete a field. We then walked through the steps together to catalog a mono monograph title in the editor. Following that discussion, we spent two sessions exploring Wikidata. In the first session, Sharon led the group look at the University of Virginia's Wikidata project and talked about her own institution's plan on creating a similar project. And Jodine led the group to go over the Wikidata tutorial so we all learned the basics of how to edit a Wikidata item. Some of the questions we discussed about include what are the advantages of creating a Wikidata project for our institution? What might be the potential barriers and how can we overcome these barriers? In the second session, we invited Acadia Falcon, the metadata coordinator from Stanford University 
to talk to us about the Wikidata project developed from Stanford University Libraries. We learned how they started their project, who were involved, and how they prioritized that pro their project. We're very grateful that Acadia could spend the time with us and sharing her tips on starting a Wikidata project. Next slide, please. So besides having our own discussions, we also attended community discussions around linked data, such as the virtual read-along of the book, Linked Data for the Perplexed Librarian, hosted by the Association for Library Collection and Technical Services New Members Interest Group. We had our follow-up discussion about the book led by Ma Sun Zhou. We talked about our biggest takeaways from the book. We asked the questions like, if there are any part of, book, of the book that helped us understand linked data better, if there is anything we like or didn't like about the book, anything we think are missing from the book, and we also discuss about uh, the possible projects that we can explore further, which Joe will talk a little bit um, later. We kept track of any training opportunities around linked data and BigFrame, reminding each other to watch so we can discuss about it later. And here is a list of the webinars and presentations that were, on, were in our watch list. And now I will pass it to Sharon to talk about what we have accomplished this year, the challenges we had, and the benefits of having a study group. Next slide, please. Thanks, Xi Ping. Our group has accomplished a great deal since we began last August. We were able to meet for the entire academic year as planned, and despite having limited resources at our disposal, we were able to build a solid foundation for understanding linked data concepts. We gained hands-on experience using Synopia Editor, and many of us gained hands-on practice with Wikidata by adding or editing the Wikidata items for our respective libraries. Our interest in learning more about Wikidata led us to reach out to Arcadia Falcone of Stanford University, who very graciously gave of her time and expertise to discuss Stanford's Wiki project with us. Now that the first year of our study group is complete, we've begun exploring individual linked data projects. Next slide, please. We have experienced some ch challenges along the way, both with our study group and with linked data. Sometimes it's been difficult to strike a balance between work and studying. Studying linked data can be frustrating since moving from theory to practice can be very difficult. One reason why Wikidata has resonated so much with the group is that it is an accessible tool for gaining hands-on practice with linked data. Another challenge is that we've also had difficulties in starting a linked data project of our own due to limited resources at our disposal and system dependencies and constraints. Next slide, please. However, overall participation in our study group has been tremendously beneficial. It's been heartening for each of us to realize that we are not alone and to be given the chance to connect with like-minded colleagues whose knowledge and skills are at the same level. We've been able to learn from each other and feel safe asking questions of each other. The collaborative learning process has given us confidence and provided motivation and inspiration to continue to stretch our knowledge and move forward with studying as a group. The study group has also given us the opportunity to build relationships with colleagues at other institutions. Working with each other on a monthly basis has strengthened these relationships. And now I'll turn things over to Jill to discuss our individual projects and our future plans. Thanks, Sharon. Oh, for this, I'm sorry, next, for, next slide, please. <laughs> for the summer, the members of our study group are exploring how to implement linked data through individual projects. Jodine is continuing to work on selected items from a collection about Charlie Wilson, a Democratic politician and congressman from Lufkin, Texas, 
and the subject of the 2007 movie, Charlie Wilson's War. I am working on a collection about the silent film actress, Pola Negri, using items from special collections, as well as monographs and DVDs from the circulating collection. Sharon is working on increasing visibility for the University of Connecticut faculty, collections and research through Wikidata. And Susan, Martha, and Xi Ping are investigating BibFrame and Wikidata capabilities in the Alma ILS. Next slide, please. We are planning on continuing our remote meetings in the fall and we'll be using them to continue to discuss new developments around linked data, along with any conferences, webinars, and reading we have learned from. We will be exploring a, a possible collaborative Wikidata project together, learning about and exploring possible ways to move ourselves towards publishing linked data, both individually and as a group, and to work together on conference presentations and writing about our experiences and lessons for scholarly publication. Next slide. Okay, so thank you all for attending our presentation today. Uh, we hope it will encourage those of you interested in a study group to connect with each other and learn together. Um, if you have any questions or would like more advice about studying, starting your own study group, you can email any of us and we'll be happy to help. Our email addresses are listed on this slide, um, and we'll also be putting a link to some of the resources we've used over the last two years in chat momentarily, if you would like to take a look at that. Um, thank you once again, and um, now we'll open uh, the discussion for questions. Thanks, presenters. This is Greg, uh, session facilitator again. Um, we do have some questions coming in, just to remind all the the participants in this session, uh, if you can use the Q&A button to ask your questions. So I'm just going to read off uh, what's here and, and, and uh, presenters, you can comment on this. The first one's not really a question, it's a comment, but I'm going to share it for you to comment on if you'd like. It's from Ellen McGrath at um, University of Buffalo. I've always been afraid to lose the skills I'd learn if I didn't have the time or project to practice them. Plus the tools have evolved quite a bit over the years. Any comments or things you want to add to that idea of keeping skills fresh and current? Um, I think I'll answer, I'll, I'll just comment on that. Um, I think that's very true. Um, I think all of the, our, the members of the study group um, will agree on that, um, especially when you're learning something as abstract as linked data you know, you, you, you did some readings and learning um, a couple of months ago, and then if you don't have something to practice on, you tend to forget maybe half of it, if not all of it. Um, but I think on the other hand, one of the advantages of having this study group is that we were trying to always keep, ad keep updated um, of what's, uh, you know, currently happening in the area of wind data. So that's a way for us to, you know, you know, always keep up to date on, on, the, on its current development, so. I'll comment also, I think that was an advantage of having the study group is that there were specific times that we had set up uh, for monthly meetings. And so uh, I guess I'm a fan of deadlines sometimes <laughs> because then it would uh, motivate me to do the work to tr keep up to date uh, on what we were studying. If there's no more comments on that question, we have another question from Jesse Lambertson. First, she remarks, what a cool adventure you guys have gone on. First question is, are you all on Alma? If so, what have you learned about Alma's particular interactions with BibFrame and possible workflows using it? 
If you're not all on Alma, have you considered possible linked data workflows for your particular systems? And, and she says this might be nitty gritty. Uh, University of Houston libraries migrated to, migrated to Alma last year, actually last July. So we have been on Alma uh, and Primo VE for a year now. Um, so far, you know, honestly, honestly, we haven't really spent a lot of time um, exploring BitFrame within Alma, but um, I know right now you can export Bit, uh, bit records into BitFrame or RDF format. So that's definitely something that uh, I personally would be interested in looking into in terms of incorporating BitFrame into our workflow. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to do that yet, um, but you know, as I said, that's one thing that's in our plan, so we're definitely, I'm definitely interested in looking into that into the future, in the future. Great. Um, Jesse has a, a second question. Um, the second part of her question was within your respective systems and workflows. Have you talked about how you might prepare your local data for link for linked open data usage and future conversation efforts for the future, discovery or URI enhancements, et cetera. Um, for me, well, I haven't gotten nearly that far. Um, I have been looking at possibly uh, using some of the uh, fields uh, with the zero um, subfield to add some kind of linked data information. The next question from an attendee. What do you see as lacking in currently available training materials on linked data, BibFrame, and Synopia? Um, one of the things that I see is lacking is, and maybe not lacking, but it seems we mentioned this, it's very hard to go from theory to practice. And I think more training materials could explore that kind of bridge and how to explain that to people with who are interested but have little to no experience. And I'll just add a little bit to what Susan said. I find that um, a lot of the information that's available is a little has been traditionally a little bit above my head and experience. Um, so that's why this study group has been so fantastic being able to talk questions through with people. Uh, I would I would agree um, with both of those things. Things like, um, oh, I don't know if I uh, understand about uh, having uh, where you, where to put the uh, triples in the and how to develop uh, something uh, storage for the triples. <coughs> Great. Next question that we have here. Um, how do you choose the individual projects for linked data implementation? Were there any criteria for selecting the specific projects? Um, I'll go ahead and talk about mine. I was looking for uh, something that was unique to my institution and um, uh, I think that, you know, making it more visible um, from other than our catalog and uh, the, the, uh, uh, the resources within our website. So um, that's, that's my goal is to um, 
uh, choose things that are unique right now? Uh, my criteria was uh, much the same. And I also wanted to add some uh, special collections materials to be able to work with uh, different types. Um, I just want to add that we, um, as for me, I don't really have a personal project per se, but um, I'm very interested in exploring more about Wikidata. Um, I'm interested in, to see if it's possible to sort of like um, transcribe one of our special collection um, into Wikidata. Seems like that's uh, what a lot of libraries have been doing right now. So that's one area that I'm interested in ex exploring more about. And for my individual project, I'm interested in sort of highlighting not necessarily the special collections at my library, um, but the faculty and the research that's being done as a way of sort of highlighting that and exposing that as much as possible. Here's another question from Le Leslie Ingelson. Do you have systems librarians at your institutions to help you with the system software programming side of making linked data collections available? Or is that up for you to handle? Okay, I'll start if you want. Um, I, we have um, IT uh, that's uh, somewhat available, but they do not really understand the library side of things. So that has to be, uh, you have to try to uh, have them understand for any system software programming. Um, we, we used to have um, systems librarians in our uh, library, but um, right before this started, our, before our group started, um, our university um, reassigned them. So we don't have any dedicated librarian, library systems people anymore. Yeah, um, I'll add to the, that. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Martha. Uh, we don't have a systems librarian per se. We do have someone that helps us with the software setup. And then a lot of times we have to reach out to our university computing um, department to help set up things, whether it be the website or, or other areas. Um, or sometimes it's our marketing um, area for our institution. So, yeah, that could be a little bit challenging. GP? <laughs> yeah, I was just going to add that we do have a whole um, technology, you know, te te technology department at U UH. Um, but uh, as some of the other um, members have said that there are more on the technical side um of the library and so i always feel like um for me unless i'm really decided to devote time and effort into a project um i wouldn't you know i would be re like reluctant to reach out to them and have to explain everything you know link data and everything to them so yeah and um, Dickinson is very small. Um, our IT department, I know, has helped with some of the integrations between Alma and other systems, but those are sort of critical projects. And um, I have a feeling that anything with linked data would not be considered a critical project. Um, so I think I'm probably on my own. <laughs> At UConn, we do have a systems librarian who is aware and somewhat knowledgeable about linked data. But since we're not really doing anything concrete with linked data. Um, I haven't called on her for expertise.
Okay, hey, next question that came through. Um, Christine asks, are you, any of you considering participating in the PCC Wikidata pilot? Uh, it's open to non-PCC libraries. Um, we're, we're interested. We're still sort of discussing about uh, working in a Wikidata project together as a group. So, but we've um, saw the call on the um, discussion list and we're, we're still thinking about it. So but thanks for putting that in here. Here's your next question. Tharwat would like to know, how can we embed or engage BibFrame into the library integrated system? Or do we need a different platform or a conversion tool? I think as an Alma user, uh, Ex Libris is, um, I think they're working on incorporating BibFrame into Alma. So um, I, I'm, I don't, I'm not sure if that's something that we as um, like library, individual library users can easily do. So for us, I think we, really we have we have to rely on the the system the vendor to do it for us and do the conversion too like if sometime in the future this bit frame really happens um we would probably most likely rely on the vendor to do that for us Okay, the next question that's come through. Um, would you be open to enlarging the size of your group or do you feel that the relatively small size is an advantage? Um, personally, I think that having a small group is, um, or relatively small, is an advantage here. Um, we're all comfortable talking to each other. And also just from a scheduling perspective, um, it's hard for us to schedule how many members we have now across um, at least, we have two time zones, I think. Um, so that's difficult enough. Um, I think anybody would benefit from having a smaller group. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to add to that because the time zones, two is manageable, um, three or four might get a little tricky depending on uh, where your members are. So um, small, relatively small, I think really is a, a very doable um, and fits well with what we've done before. So. The next question is as follows. Has technical service staff, how do you think to communicate with reference staff or digital humanities staff about what you learned on linked data? Or maybe interchangeably reference staff could share their knowledge with technical services about Wikidata? I think I, I feel like right now we're um, we're still in like sort of like the learning mode. So what uh, what we do at UH is that whenever there's a webinar um, available on link data and BitFrame, we would sort of like promote it to all people who might be interested, so that they will be um, sort of that like uh, they will be informed of you know, what's happening in the technical service, you know, in the technical uh, services field. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's what we'll do right now. Um, 
I haven't really gotten to the point of presenting to all of my colleagues, but when I discuss possible projects with my boss, um, the way I frame it is benefit to the library, benefit to the college, to the faculty. All right, I, um, before I get to the next question, I noticed in chat, Laura uh, commented on, uh, she, meant, she made this comment that I think is pertinent to some of the discussion we've had already, especially integrating this stuff into our, into an ILS. Timeline as of yesterday for Link Data Editor in Alma, proof of concept 2021, production release 2022, based on a presentation yesterday. So um, just wanted to share that with you. Um, it's in the chat there. So next question, Leslie Ingelson, she asks, are you working with other people at your institution on these projects, such as special collection staff or institutional repository staff? Okay, well, I, um, for me, that was an interesting question because uh, we're pretty small. So uh, there is no uh, special collections staff. I, I operate as the special collections liaison. And I also uh, work in our library's institutional repository. So that's all me. <laughs> At UConn, I'm fortunate to work with a, another metadata management librarian. Um, and she and I, as, as well as a metadata colleague at UConn Health, have been talking about the idea of this uh, wiki project for UConn. Um, so I'm fortunate to have colleagues that I can bounce some of these ideas off of and discuss things with. Um, I've um, talked a little bit with um, our archives libra librarian, but um, uh, really there's very little interest. Uh, we're not that big either. Uh, we do have an archival staff, but um, they have plenty of projects and link data hasn't come along far enough for them. So um, I'm, I'm it. <laughs> um, at University of Houston Libraries, we have a metadata uh, unit who is working on responsible for our digital libraries. And so they are working on their um, like link data project. Uh, for me, who's coming from like the cataloging team, um, um, I'm, I think I'm the only person who's uh, sort, sort of working on the traditional cataloging part so that, you know, on that, that part. So. And um, Dickinson does have um, an institutional repository. Um, I would be open at some point to um, working with them a little bit. Um, I have a lot of institutional repository experience myself from previous uh, positions, um, but I've, uh, I haven't even been in my position a year and uh, half of it has been COVID-19 and quarantine. Um, so I haven't really um, gotten to the point of addressing that yet. Um, we've gone through all the questions in the Q&A, but there's one uh, question in chat that was sent to me. Um, they wanted to know what future topics you'll be focusing on in the group. I know, I think you might have had a slide about it, but if you could elaborate more about future directions. Um, as I said earlier, I think we're very interested in um, collaborating on a Wikidata project and we're still thinking about it. And also I think one of our goals for, for the study group is to um, keep updated with the current development in, Bit, uh, in linked data and BitFrame. So I think what, whatever that's happening um, in the future, that will be, I'm sure that will be um, the topics of our discussion. Anybody else wants to add that? I 
and also um, I think on one of our slides we listed um, the presentations and webinars around the linked data and BigFrame. Um, so we always wanted to sort of like remind each other to watch those and then find a time to discuss uh, of what we have learned uh, from, from those um, presentations. So. Oh, and also we're in the midst of posting um, one of our handouts of suggested oh, yeah. readings that we followed. I think Sharon's working on that. Yeah, we'll, we would like to share with you guys um, sort of like a brief list of our study material. So in case if you're interested in taking a look. And we also have, um, this is a brief list. We also have a long detailed list. So after reading the brief list, if you're interested, feel free to reach out to any of us and we'd be happy, we'd be happy to, to send you the, the long list. For those of us that are interested in, in following your model and doing what you did, from the lessons learned, what might you say that we shouldn't do? In, in other, I mean, what should we avoid or what's unproductive? Or, or you may have found anything that Um, personally, I don't think anything has been really unproductive. Um, I think what we've done has worked fairly well for us, um, but any of the other panelists are free to disagree with me. <laughs> um, I'm certainly not going to begrudge anyone their opinion. Um, but I think the group has worked fairly well in the two years that we've been doing it. And obviously it's evolved from a small group of librarians at the University of Houston to encompass um, still a small group, but librarians from other institutions. Yeah, I think also it's grown very logically, you know, just starting off with basics of what is linked data. Um, and then it's kind of grown to exploring Sinopia and some other areas. So over the two years, it's, it's developed nicely. Um, and then also just having those members from other institutions has really been enlightening um, to hear how they do things um, and some of the challenges they have, you know, make us realize that we're, we're truly in this together, where it's not just one library having roadblocks. It's it's, you know, everywhere. And then also uh, just, yeah, just learning from one another has really been good. And then once they, those people can bring in other people, such as when we brought in Arcadia um, to speak, that was through one of our uh, members that had met her, that met and reached out for that contact. So that was really nice. Well, I don't, I don't see any more questions. Uh, there's some good comments in the chat just to uh, some, some uh, uh, supporting the work that you're doing, saying that what you're doing is really cool and that it's great that you're sharing these experiences. So thanks to the presenters today for our session. We appreciate them taking the time to share with us what they've learned. I think this will be great uh, just for others if they want to get interested and jump in. This is a great starting point. So thank you so much for sharing it with us today, um, and we'll see you around. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, everybody.